find yourself unfulfilled? Do you feel like just like, you know, no matter what you do, you're just not getting where you want to be, or there's always something wrong, or things could just be better? Well, today you're in luck. We're going to talk about building better habits for fulfilling life. This is the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Danny, here with my buddy Randy. What's up, Randy? Hello, Danny. Let me ask you, Randy. So, how important do you think habits are for, for living a good life or a fulfilling life? You know, this is a tricky one because I have been contemplating this in my mind for the past few weeks. You know, like Aristotle or somebody like him said that we are the sum of our habits. And so for a long time, I thought that habits were really important. And so I built up all these habits for having a really good life. But it was like there was no time to do anything else other than these good habits that I had. So then I just stopped all many of them. And then, you know, life takes a dump. And then, well, is it the habits fault or is it just by chance? And then I'm like, well, I should start doing some habits. So I'm completely lost. I was hoping you had the answer to this one. (laughs) I'm actually glad you mentioned that, dude, because it's funny, like, I think about this a lot, too. And like, it's funny that like they can get to be too much. Like there is a balance, I think. Um, and it cracks me up because like I noticed like recently this in my own life in the past like eight years, like habits have been really helpful for me, like doing better, like getting scheduled, routine, all that. But I cut out some of them because like now I really only have like it's like a short bit of my beginning of my day and the end of the day where I really focus on like habitual stuff. Like actually these habits that I cultivate. The rest is open and I feel like that works for me really well. And I think that's part of it is maybe finding like what works for you as an individual like how much you know uh restriction do you need in time in your day to like manage it or do you need like more open-ended and stuff it's and hard though yeah you want to know how crazy it was getting so like i was doing the same thing bookending the day with habits except it got to be so long that like i would not want to wake up because i didn't want to have to do all that stuff and i would put <laughs> off going to sleep because i didn't want to do all that stuff before going to sleep yeah i've kept mine to like my morning and evening habits are probably like 30 minutes each. They're short. Like I kept them short on purpose because I realized that too. Like the longer you make, the harder it gets to do. It's like, and at a certain point, it's like, do I want to not do 10 things or actually do three? <laughs> you know? well, you, you, you hit the nail on the head there because it's, it's so easy to get caught in this. I have to be good at everything and I have to be winning in every area of my life. And I have been struggling with this so much recently because like we're both learning a whole bunch of stuff and like making yeah. great strides in certain areas of life. And yet I want to kill it in literally every area of my life. And it's driving yeah. me freaking insane. Well, you know, it's funny. And we've talked about this before. And I was talking about this. My partner, I think a lot of it, too, is like the Internet gives you this this idea of perfection and everything. Like everybody appears to be perfect in everything they do. Like, oh, you train your dog, your dog's got to be perfect or you know, you do this when you go to work. Well, it's got to be done perfectly. You work out, it's got to be the best exercise, you know, whatever. Like, and I think that's really damaging to our ability to cultivate habits, form them and continue them because a lot of times forming habits is a lot of like failure, actually. It's actually cultivating the actual habit, which takes a long time to like drill it into you and become part of your day, you know? And I think it's really easy when we don't feel like there's perfection to just give up. See, so, yeah, I agree with you. I think that is dangerous. And, you know, it gets to be like too overbearing i think and it gets in the way of our actual progress so this is the trick i think with fulfilling life is we have to have that find that balance that works for us and then figure out what habits are actually good that's mm-hmm. the other hard part and also i've been i've been contemplating bad habits recently because huh. like okay so like i'll say it again i was in pain for like three weeks or whatever it kind of you know it ruined Keep my talking life. about i it. know <laughs> you big baby <laughs> but like I, yeah, when I, sucks. when I was in pain, I was just like, and I did this, I did this like life expectancy thing. And so apparently I'm supposed to live like 50 years longer or something like that. And I was like, I can't live this life for another 50 years. Like maybe I need to start drinking heavily and smoking cigarettes and just doing <laughs> just a whole bunch of dangerous it. activities because like, this is getting to be ridiculous. Yeah. It's funny, dude. Like I, I was thinking about the smoking thing the other day too, with respect to that. Cause like, okay. So I obviously still vape. Everybody knows that, I'm sure. But like, <laughs> what are you going to do? Yeah. yeah, but like, I was thinking about the other day because like, you know, everybody always tells me like, oh, you got, you should stop, you should stop. But I smoked for over 20 years. So like, for me personally, like, this was a good step down. We're like, one, because I had, all right, look, I still enjoyed smoking. It wasn't like I didn't enjoy it. That's not why I stopped. 
It was there's like, like there's there's literally no other habits that are as pleasurable as smoking. Like nothing. I know, and as addictive, yeah. they're in, yeah. it's insane. Yeah, and like so the cost was just getting out of control. And like I noticed I was coughing a lot at night and stuff, and that was worrisome. I switched to the vape, and that stopped. Like my breathing's a lot better, and all, and the cost is a lot less. So for me, that was a good transition. And frankly, I'm happy right now. I have no desire to stop vaping, and I may not. I don't know. Like I might in the future. You know, it might take a while though, because I did them for a long time. But I was thinking about that because like a lot of people were like, you got to quit, you got to quit. And it's like, but that's not going to work for me. I know it's not going to work. So what's better? Trying to quit getting upset with myself, going back to smoking and flip-flopping, just being angry a lot, or doing this, which works. It's slightly better. And I think this is the kind of thing we have to think about, right? Sometimes like a good habit is a small improvement. It might not be a dramatic 180, you know? Well, dude, I've been. this is the exact thing that I've been thinking about is like, Looking at my habits, I am living the ideal life. You know, like all these super healthy things that I do that are great for everything. And I'm miserable. You know, now I don't know how much of that is due to being in pain or the time of the year or whatever. But like yeah. I'm doing all this stuff and I'm miserable. And I'm like, well, what's the point of that? Like, what's the point of adding 20 years to my life if I'm just freaking miserable doing it? You know, what always worries me, too, is like they always say like you're adding this X number, but you don't even know if you are. And like. The funny thing is genetics plays such a large part, too, that even if you do all these things, I mean, you know, we all know the stories of people that never smoked day in their lives, they get lung cancer, you know, mm -hmm. like sometimes you just have a disposition you can't account for. It. It's out of your control. So there's also this like game in our heads, I think we play of like the risk and reward. Like, is it worth this when I don't know? You know what I mean? And I think in some cases it's OK to have things that we do that aren't necessarily perfect and healthy for us. I think that's human. You know, doing them all the time is bad. But also, like, you know, making improvements is good. Like, I'm not pushing myself to be abstained from something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, cutting down is good, right? Things like that, I think, can be a better approach than, like, the all or nothing. Yeah. yeah you like, actually, I, sometimes, like, I sometimes wish, or, yeah, you should get in. I'll, I'll come back. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, the thing I was thinking about was Aristotle. When he talked about, you know, virtue being the mean between two um, extremes of vice, you know, the, the deficiency and um, excess. That middle ground is like, I think about that a lot because that's like, you know, that's that tricky point to hit that's going to be unique to you and it's going to work for you and help you continue forward. But like, I think this, you know, when we abstain completely from stuff, it doesn't mean we have control over it. It doesn't mean we have self-control. Self-control sometimes takes a long time. It takes building and incremental steps, not these wild swings. And I think that's important too, to keep in mind, you know, like, that building habits also means self-control and also means something we can maintain over time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. It is. It definitely is something that requires adding and taking away. You know, because I I get into this adding loop and then before I know it, I'm trying to do 100 things at once. And it happens over and, and you over. You never and over can complete again. your day, right? You can yeah. never get everything done. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just the most because you could have like literally the perfect day and you're like, but I couldn't get all I, you know. But yeah. I didn't do X, Y, yeah, you know, it's funny. I actually got a planner this year on purpose um, because I noticed I was like filling my days with way too much crap. And this way I can write down my to do and look at it on paper and pen and ink and adjust mm. it. And like I noticed I'm getting much better results because before I would just have this long list of like these hundred and I can never complete it in a day. There was just too many things I was doing. Yeah. And so like I noticed it helped my mood. I feel more positive because I feel like I'm actually getting on what I want to. Hmm. you know that's a good one yeah so um what i was gonna say earlier was i still wish like three out of four doctors recommended marlboro i know <laughs> <laughs> Yo, those I were the watching, good old days <laughs> i was dying because i was watching this show um for all mankind and it starts yeah. out like during the early space race and dude they're smoking inside nasa they're smoking look like, all everybody women men everything they do and i'm like damn that was when they recommended it as like life affirming yeah. <laughs> yeah they're like are you stressed have a cigarette and some cocaine you'll feel better yeah <laughs> and if you can't sleep drink a whiskey have some valium yeah. don't worry about it you can take them like tic tacs yeah. like... <laughs> right? oh my gosh uh, different times right the good old days yeah, yeah. uh but so that, anyways the thing about... yeah. oh no this is the thing about habits though i think is sometimes we we get in this where we put too much pressure on ourselves for perfection instead of actually looking at habits as a component of a fulfilling life and a good life. And it's something that requires, they require work. Dude, they do like, 
if you try and like, I mean, we both know if you try to implement too many new habits at once, you will not successfully adopt them. There's just no way because it's too hard to incorporate all that new crap. So it's like a slow building process. And I think a lot of this is like, you know, finding what works for us. Okay. So, so here's, here's the tricky thing is trying to define the target. Okay. Cause like we want a fulfilling, yeah. like the, the good life, the fulfilling life. And whatever the hell that means. Whatever the hell that means. And on whatever scale you're looking at, whether it's day to day yeah. or month or year, or whatever it is. Because it's tricky because a lot of times I think of that and I'm like, oh, fulfill it. That means that I'm happy. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm happy. It just means mm-hmm. that like overall my life is good. I'm flourishing. Eudaimonia. I can't even yeah. say that right now. Eudaimonia. But... Eudaimonia. Damn it. <laughs> I said exactly like you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, that's a good point though, too. Though. I think like that is, you know, kind of the difficulty is, I don't know, it's like finding that right balance and amount for me. And I, I like, I've been trying to stop thinking of it as happiness as the goal, because I think that's just such a stupid way to look at it. Like mm-hmm. to me, the good life, the flourishing life, eudaimonia, like they all are better because they imply a full life. And like, they don't suggest that you're going to be in a positive state of mind all the time or in a joyous Uh state because that's ridiculous. We're not going to be. So I think like, forget happiness. Like we'll be happy sometimes, you know, and we'll be, we won't be other times and that's okay. Uh But like trying to define that target of like, what is good life for you or fulfilling life? What does it look like? Is it, you know, achieving certain things? Is it having good relationships? Is it, you know, living in a certain place? Like, kind of defining this and then using that as a guide to kind of build those habits that will reach there. Right. Yeah. So, uh, is this funny thing thing I was thinking about this week? Because like, like I said, I was in pain and my mental, you know, everything was ending. Everything, yeah, <laughs> everything was like terrible, but like, you know, I, I, somebody was saying, well, do you want to be right? Or do you want to be happy? And I was like, that's not a fair question because both. Yeah. yeah it's like, clearly I want to be happy, but, in my mind, if I'm not right, I'm not happy. And if I'm right, yeah. I'm not happy. So, <laughs> so it's like no it's matter what, I'm ha- unhappy or unhappy. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, I, I, I think the happiness thing is a mistake. And mm. I think we've sold, I think that, I, I, I honestly think too, the, the conception of the good life we get from society, especially like the US, is so bad. Because it has no consideration of like your quality of life, your, you know, well-being anything and dude, you know it, well plus the u.s ranks pretty much the lowest in terms of happy countries like they've I, they've done a lot of uh no one's happy that i saw no yeah, the, the higher the the higher the growth or the higher the average income of the country the less happy the people are because money makes you want to like when you get in the habit of accumulating money it makes you want to trade your future like your present experience for some future thing of happiness. And all you're trying to do is find salvation in the future for whatever yeah. is ailing you now, as opposed to you're just all trying to fill this head. hole. Right. And mm-hmm. like, and I think too, the problem with money is too, when we're, we're sold the story in the U S that like all of that good life success, everything depends on wealth. But the problem with that is that you'll always have less than somebody else. So it's a losing battle of always trying to, I mean, that's why we got these people that have $300 billion and they're still working 80, 90 hours a week trying to earn more money right Uh like when any person in any other time would probably just stopped way long time ago because you you know yeah and just do things that you want to do and i think this is the problem right so like we need to redefine the end goal too or the goal because it shouldn't be happiness some later date it should be a good life right now or making my life better consistently every day and every year you know so it's it's it is kind of a tricky target the way that i've been thinking about it in a couple different ways so like i would say like overall is my life getting better the answer is yes but it's very very hard on like a day-to-day thing because i'll be f- and it, and it's especially hard oh, yeah. when you're in a bad mood so like those are the oh, yeah. of, hungry but, tired yeah i know right uh but like another thing another way to look at it is like am i expanding and growing or am i contracting and shrinking and so that's another way that i look at it because like a lot of these things that are, that are growing me are painful you know? Oh yeah, and then yeah. and then I'm miserable because of that, and I'm like, well, my life sucks, and it's like, hang on, I chose this burden. <laughs> Another cold night on yeah. the side of Everest, cold right. dark night on the side of Everest, right? Seriously, yeah. 
Yeah, it is funny. I mean, we choose it and like, it's just, it's hard being a person, you know, we can't do everything. We all, no user's you know, manual. No, we all want to win, whatever the hell that means. Even though we can't, we all die. Mm -hmm. You know, we can't bring anything with us. We have a terrible conception of time and longevity and a crappy relationship with our own mortality. Like, it's uh -huh. just really hard <laughs> being a person. Yeah, being a person sucks. <sighs> so, to yeah. build habits, better habits. What would you suggest to people then? To, if they want to be have a more fulfilling life through habits, what would you suggest? I would say just try out some habits. Like, if you don't have any habits, so, I mean... We'll we'll be honest. Probably until I was a third, until I was thirty, really the only daily habit that I had was masturbating. Like that was pretty much the only thing that for a consistent period of time I've done every day. But like the only thing I never think I was addicted to, other than that, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and so like, but then once uh once I figured out habits, I started implementing them, and some of them I could definitely see move the needle. Some of them immediately. Some it took a while uh and kind of try some give them up yeah that how about you i think that's the trouble right you gotta test them out you gotta kind of take that shock on a person sometimes yeah mm -hmm. i think for me personally like i i found them extremely helpful in the past i would say like eight years have been crazy helpful in my life but i think the way i've learned to do them now is like it's a a focus on my growth development over time and a, a slowly building habits that work for me that help me get there whether that's like, you know, I've been trying to implement habits of doing more hobbies more often, taking a certain amount of time every day to just do stuff that's fun for me, because I find that it makes me better. I feel better, I'm happier, mm -hmm. it's more enriching, you know. And so that's been a great one that I've implemented recently. So like every day for about a half hour, hour, I've been taking photos, doing stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they don't have to all be like work oriented, I guess. But like giving yourself that chance to do something that makes your life literally more fulfilling. And I think like, you know, the virtue ethicists, Aristotle, the Stoics. Like all of them thought, you know, habits were essential, right? Building your character is the whole thing that you need to do to be, to live a good life. And if you think about that, that means they worked on themselves their whole lives and it was slow. They weren't doing all these things at once. It was slowly, you know, slow, cumulative growth over time. And I yeah. think that's our problem too. We want everything in seven days, 24 hours, you know, three minutes, not over a lifetime. Yeah. And it's so hard to kind of see that they did develop over time. Like I just on pretty much like once a month, I listen to the meditations and also the Tao Te Ching. And this time when I was listening, I got really jealous. Like I was like, oh, I wish that I knew that stuff. You know, like when when Lao Tzu was talking about himself in the Tao Te Ching, how like, you know, like others are sharp and he's dull and others are bright and he's dark and uh, <laughs> And I was like, I got really jealous how he was just able to like be and all this stuff. And I was like, Ugh. but this was the end of his life. Like as he was leaving wherever he was leaving before he went into into like becoming a hermit well, and just if that's even who it was, because that's all legend stuff, yeah. you know, I mean, and like, yeah, that legend kind of annoys me because it's like he just like sat down and wrote this awesome book. And he's like, see you later, fellas, I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah, but like. The meditation by Marcus Aurelius is a much better example of somebody struggling with it all the time and working mm -hmm. through them and a cumulative growth, not a, you know, like all of a sudden rapid expansion type thing. Yeah. And I, and I like his, because it's also like he, he starts be, book two with like, remember every morning when you wake up, you're going to deal with like retards, like just the worst people on earth. And it's like, yeah. hang on, here's the guy who's literally the richest, the most popular whatever and he's saying everything yeah. pretty much the first thing he said because book one is basically just him saying like thank you for giving me life book two starts the actual uh stuff and he's just like yeah today you're gonna deal with schmucks <laughs> like people yeah. are idiots just remember yeah book one thank you for life then the rest of them are complaining <laughs> yeah and you're gonna die <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah you know it's funny though because like uh, I was thinking too about like what Aristotle says of friendship I always like because he talks about why like good friends are important like true friends and he says because they're like a reciprocal self so they help us in our virtuous growth right because it's easier to evaluate somebody's actions like correctly if they're not us like you know so for instance like you and I like if you do something really good you might be humble about it and like play it down but I can tell you I can see and be like no you, that was really awesome you should be proud right and like that kind of judgment right can help you grow in virtue 
But if you think about that, that means the growth is slow over time. It's not quick and all of a sudden. It means you take it takes work and our interactions with people can be really helpful. Like mm-hmm. doing this every week with you has helped so much for me. Oh, same. Now, and you know, like daily, it's hard to see that growth. But when I look back over when we started till now, dude, it's like huge. And I think that's what they meant, but it's hard for us to see because we're so short sighted. You know, we don't have good long term like planning, thinking anything. Mm hmm. So this is another thing that I was just thinking of. There's this motivational speaker, Jim Rohn. He and he always he he talked a lot about having to reflect on what you've done. So he would I mean, he went like way overboard. He's like at the end of every day, you need to reflect on the day at the end of every week. You need to reflect on the All week right. every I'm month. I'm not doing that much self-reflection. On. I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. But but it does make sense because I forget how good I have it. Because I don't take the time to look back and see that all all that I've done and all the good stuff. Dude, we are like super, super skilled at being not grateful about anything unless we practice gratitude. Like we have to consciously practice it. Otherwise, we take everything for granted. We all do it. It's really and I think it's just part of adaption, right? We're very good at like seeing our normal world as just normal and expecting it all the time. And that is a danger so gratitude like that's that kind of reflections yeah it's wildly helpful mm-hmm. and it's like the small delays thing right but i think you got to build to that like you can't just start doing that because you'll you'll totally fail if you try and reflect after all those things like it just won't work right yeah. away but you could do like a 10 minute reflection at the end of the day right okay. start that maybe well yeah. let's get into it what habits have you had over the past however long that you think have been particularly helpful i will say so um journaling in the morning and at night one at a time one at a time you do one then you do one then you do one then oh okay journaling so that's Mm -hmm. been super helpful but i so about what about what because people will say what do i write about how long do i have to write for anything from a you know i usually aim for like five minutes it could be anything though from a sentence like i might think about that one sentence a lot that has happened so you know i write a few pages if things are going you know maybe even more it just depends do you start your journal and then end it sincerely danny (laughs) I should though. <laughs> I just write. Uh, I'm the only one looking at it. But like, yeah. yeah, I mean, you know, like I, I've always journaled though, like for as long as I can ever remember. So it's never been like a burden to me. But like, I put no pressure on myself for for amount. Mm-hmm. I don't think that matters. So it could be just like literally, I could write down three words. That's enough, you know. Um, but it's more about sitting there and thinking, and mm-hmm. just think, you know, kind of reflecting on just writing and just getting stuff out can be very helpful. What happens if you miss some days? Um, now I used to get upset about it. Like now I don't really frustrate. It doesn't frustrate me that much because I know, like I said, it's not I've done for a long time. So it's, I know I'll just, I can fall back and do it really easy. I used to get frustrated because I was afraid I'd stop, Mm. but you know, so now it's not a big deal. Um, so I don't really get stressed because there's things happen, dude. Like I had a rough week a couple of weeks ago and I just did, I did in a couple of days, but then I, you know, it also helped me deal with some stuff. So too, after that. So I think it's like, you know, it's reminding yourself to go back to it. But once you kind of cultivated the habit, I think it's easy to go back to it. It's not a big deal to miss. Mm-hmm. But in the beginning, it can be kind of um, difficult. I think you got to be more regimented early on. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Cool. So I'll give one and then back to you. So uh, you mentioned it already, but I'll say the small delights. Because this it, has been some. Yeah. So basically, at the end of the day, just sit down and in my journal. And I, I started Dear Journal. It's Randall, in case you didn't know. In case you forgot who it was. Yeah. (laughs) And so I just write small delights and I write number one. And then, you know, whatever during the day that I noticed that I could be grateful for. And in the beginning, I mean, for both of us, in the beginning, it was really difficult. We would be like, well, I don't know. Like, I had a shitty day. Like, there's nothing. But now it's like. I also felt stupid in the beginning, too, being like, my cup of coffee was good, you know. (laughs) But like. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, how often do you watch a movie and you see the person in the movie have a cup of coffee and there's steam coming off of it? And then they take that first sip and they're savoring it and they're like, ah. And you're like, okay. oh, I wish that was me. But guess what? It can be pretty much every day. And so, yeah. like, how ma- I mean, how many times in Small Delights over the past couple of years have we written down that cup of coffee? You know? Or, yeah. you know, what the, you know what the Small Delights helped me with a lot too was just, like reaffirming the fact that like so many things I do every day are choices I make that I want. 
Mm. And I am grateful for them. But most of the time, I'm so distracted or whatever that I don't even, it doesn't even register. Like mm -hmm. that cup of coffee in the morning that I really do enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, and I drink it every morning for a reason, like those little things. And like, I think that's what's so great about gratitude is it keeps reminding us of that. It keeps bringing us back to why we choose these things in the first place. That's a really good point. I never even looked at it that way. Yeah, because I get I, that. but that's a great one because I get so caught in that where I'm doing all these things that I want to do and they become obligations. Well, dude, I think that's I've been thinking about this a lot. I think that's our biggest like danger obstacle is that tendency to take things for granted, to treat them as obligations, to treat them as work, to treat it as a burden, rather than to be grateful that we can do it, that we are doing it, that we have a chance to learn something new, whatever the hell it is, right? And I think that the small delights really help with that. It's like amazing mm -hmm. how much that can build your positivity. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. So you're up next, Denny. I already Any mentioned others? it, but I'll say it again, the um, scheduling hobby time. Ooh. Um, but now like I'm doing it every day. Uh, or a very close to every day. Um, and this has been mostly around photography for me, but it could be anything. So like taking like a half hour, hour. Um, I also do this sometimes with video games where I'll schedule time to play because like I haven't played in a while. And like just making sure you're doing the things in your life that you enjoy just for the sake of doing. Them. Not for profit, not for some other goal, not for any other reason. Like, you know, I mean, I have tens of thousands of photos on my computer that I probably haven't shown anyone, but it doesn't matter because I just enjoy doing it. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's no end goal. It's just the process. Mm. Yeah. This is something that I've been struggling with because I, uh, I, I know what I have to do. And it sounds, it sounds the most, if, if you were to tell this to my like 17 year old self that like, this is what you're struggling with at 40, 17 year old me would have been like, what the heck's wrong with him? But it's like, yeah. play more video games and paint more miniatures. And it's like, yeah. that's what I need to do. And that's what I'm struggling with. Because, uh, you know, like, I'll have some time. And instead of playing a video game, I'll want to learn something else. Because it's like, well, yeah. if I learn more, then I'll get to that place faster. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Yeah, no. I, I guess, like, I've been trying to be more Dallas about it, dude. Like, we're like, you know, like, we're going to get there. And like, I mean, for me, a big fear, too, is like, if I don't do this fast enough, I might miss out on opportunities. Mm -hmm. If like, if I'm not at that level and those opportunities happen, but you know what? Like, I don't know if those opportunities are going to come anyway. So it's better just to do it at a pace that's good for me where I'm still enjoying my life. I still enjoy what I'm doing. And guess I'll still make new opportunities just in virtue of doing these things anyway. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to rush it, because I think that was my big problem, too. Dude. I was trying to rush everything. Because like, I, you know, like programming, right? I started and I wanted to be an expert in Python in a month. That's not going to happen. Like, you know, it takes years. Yeah. And once you realize that, it's much easier, I think, to just be more compassionate with yourself and just enjoy things. There's no, like, why the hell do we want to be miserable all the time? That sucks. You know, like, I keep telling myself that, like, what the hell does anger even ever help anything? When does being miserable help anything? I don't want to live <laughs> like that, you know? None of us do. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yep. Uh, I got a funny story. I got into a, a little bit of a tiff earlier today. So one of the one of the buildings that I go to frequently has is has like a a gated entry. Like a, you need a security card in order to get into it. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So I go in the door, and somebody comes in the door right after me that I never seen use the building before. So I said, I said to them, "Do you have a card?" And they fucking lost it, like what are you security? And I'm like, no, but what's the, what's that door there for? And like, literally yeah. this dude wouldn't go back out and do it. So I was an asshole too. Like I was, I was trying to be like, Oh, you must be having a bad day. Huh? And he's like, what's your problem? Like, dude, just drop it. And I'm like, why are you I, asking how I'm feeling? <laughs> yeah. But I'm like, but I'm like that gate, that key card thing there is for a reason, not just to inconvenience us. It's to keep out people who don't belong here. And he's yeah. like, dude, just freaking drop it. And I was like, I'm not going to drop it. Go, you know, like go back outside the door. And he's like, I'm not going outside the door. And he was getting all like physical, like aggro shit. Yeah. So I didn't feel like starting a fight. So, but I, but I was a dick to him. I was like, well, if you're going to be a dick, then I'll just take your picture and ask the front desk. And he's like, what do you want me to pose for it? But like, I, uh, I didn't handle that. But well. the fact I realized... that he blew up that fast too says something about his state of, you know, his mental health, his happiness, all of that. Because a normal person wouldn't do that. Yeah. And I mean, I all you had to do is show you his card. <laughs> yeah. 
And I was just like, what the fuck? Like, that's exact. I mean, but I also I've been reflecting on this ever since then. And I was like, I need to start critique or stop critiquing people. Like, remember a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how the dude was dripping water all over the gym. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, it, I got to That was stop. a good way that you handled it. I know, but I just need to stop doing it because I do it and people fucking blow up. Like, I don't know. Yeah. And I'm just tired of people blowing up because I just. No, and it makes you angry and stuff too. It makes you frustrated. I hate well, that. And too. then, and then I'm like blah, 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 the whole day in my head about it. Yeah, so it's not. You gotta of... pick and choose your battles, right? I know. No, but the thing about the car though is funny because I remember when I was an RA, dude. Like our buildings, you know, people all the time would let people in, and I was like, dude, I tell my, I tell the students, I was like, an RA for, I was like, guys, you gotta be careful because like, you don't lock that stuff, then people steal stuff, things get lost, and you know, don't come crying to me, like you know, and. Then we had, I think we did have somebody's room get broken into and that stopped it. And I was like, well, had you listened? And that's the whole point of the security is right. that it's secure. But if you don't do it, it means nothing. Yeah. People really only see the inconvenience of security and not the benefits yeah. of well, it. Well, that's because we're so used to the instant gratification and convenience. Like it's why we haven't done anything about the environment. Right. Because like mm. it's too much of a hassle. Yeah. Bingo. So let's uh, see. I think I gave one. You gave two. Yeah. Uh, my yeah. second one, my second one, I talk about it all the freaking time. You're going to roll your eyes when you hear it. Wim Hof breathing. <laughs> all right. Hey, it's worked so, for you, though. Dude, yeah. so it has. It's something that I do in the morning. And it's crazy because it's like a reset button for my mind. It just like the the way that Would it works. Would you say in, meditation in general? I know you specifically. Yeah, you could. You Wim could. Hof. So, I, yeah. you know, like I've been meditating. I mean, we've both been meditating for a long time. And yeah. Wim Hof breathing does something different. Like it can be considered a form of meditation, but the depth that you get to, it's kind of more similar to like any breath work type of exercises that you've done. Like uh, I forget what they're called, holistic breathing or rebirthing or any of that stuff. Because what it, it's, it's crazy how much your mind can just like instantaneously just like quiet down. Because meditation is basically sitting with your mind yapping for however long you decide to sit but Wim Hof, for a long time until you get to a point where you can shut it down yeah yeah Wim Hof breathing oftentimes will shut your mind up immediately within a minute or two and so it's a it's kind of a crazy reset switch and so I've noticed that uh, when I do it consistently I'm a lot more centered when I miss it I'm a lot more irritable that's the trick of habits too though right is that consistency because a lot of times they do add positive things to our day but then when you miss them that same reward becomes a negative right and it's mm -hmm. like yeah it can be hard yeah yeah that's mm -hmm. a good one though because it, you know breathing exercise meditation is good and finding one that you really like that makes you more likely to do it is awesome like mm -hmm. i know like with meditation like there's certain ways that i do it that like you know i have really good experiences with it sometimes especially now because i'm doing it a long time i'm much better at calming myself and all and like yeah, it's just it can be very just nice to just center yourself and bring yourself to the present and just not worry about crap for a minute, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, You want to do one more each, I guess? Yeah, one more each. And then All we'll right, call the episode. Call it. Done. Yeah. Finished. Everything's solid. Um, Just like actually having a nighttime routine and a regular bedtime has been super helpful. So I started like um, not, I guess, a couple of years ago. I started like making sure I'm in like getting washed up for bed it takes me about 20 minutes like by about 8 30 and in bed by about like 10 to 9 and then i give myself about a half hour to an hour to chill read you know talk whatever and then start trying to go to sleep around 10 and mm. that's been great because like no great it doesn't always work just nights where i have trouble sleeping at all but like i noticed it's been really helpful because i've been more likely to get that sleep every day than mm. not by having that consistent time and they say it's like the number one thing for Good sleep is just going to bed at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it, may, it makes a big difference because you're ready for bed by the time it's time to go to bed. You do it like habitual, right? You get used yeah. to like Pavlov's dogs. Like you're Bingo. like, oh, it's eight thirty. You're yawning yeah. and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, so my last one is getting outside. Okay. God. Yeah. And Dude. oftentimes it's just for a walk. Like even even a fifteen minute walk can completely change my mindset. And I try and do it during the times, the transitioning of light. So this is something that I found recently where like it has a greater effect 
where either when it when the sun's coming up or when the sun's going down, for some reason, like that time of day, I really feel being outside. That's funny because I walk every morning and every evening, but I do it at about when the sun's coming up, when the sun's going down, my dog. And dude, it has been great. And I think you're right. I never even thought of that, but you're right. I think that sunrise, sunset thing does do something. Because mm-hmm. I mean, we all feel when we sit and watch a sunrise or sunset, it always feels good. So mm-hmm. it kind of makes sense. But yeah, dude, like I do it no matter the weather. And I am so happy to do it because it's like I actually it's one of the things I do get upset when I miss it because I do. I just like doing it every day. It's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So there, I guess there you have it, guys. Um, hopefully this helped, uh, you know, try and find a building better habits for fulfilling life. I hope everybody has a better life. Uh, check us out on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. You can even leave a review. That's awesome. That'd be helpful. Uh, we'll be back later this week with another episode. Until then, there's the Existential Stoic Podcast. I'm Danny. That's my buddy, Randy. Later, Randy. Later, Danny.